a lot of parents ask, how is it like to hang out with Matt Damon? And he puts his pants on just like everyone else. <laughs> he smells like spit up just like everyone else when they have a little one in the house. It's, it's all the same. We're all just parents. I'm Karen. I'm a CPA, entrepreneur with big ideas, and I'm the mom. I'm Katie. I'm a payroll specialist, business owner, and detail-oriented person that makes things happen. And I'm the daughter. Welcome to Cheers to Business. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. Today, we are super pumped. We have Mm. Nanny Connie and her daughter on the show today. Mm. She is Nanny to the Stars, a published author, and a great businesswoman. Nanny Connie, who knew you were from (laughs) Mobile, Alabama? I'm telling you. Best kept secret. You are. You are. And and I tell you what, as we've gotten to know you a little bit this morning, you and your daughter, Courtney, we could be looking in the mirror, honey. Oh, my goodness. I did not know that you guys were a mother-daughter team, which is so amazing because we share some of the same um, qualities. Yes. So our children are more adult than we are. But would you say this morning, we got them here. Ooh, and we can take them out. (laughs) I love it. Look at, look at the look at these faces. I know. <laughs> Smile and wave, Courtney. Smile and wave. <laughs> so mean. Nanny Connie. Yes, dear. Doing a little bit of research. You have been a nanny for 30 years and a nanny <coughs> to the stars, which I'm sure is what everybody talks about. All day long. And even just more than a nanny. I you know, like you say, yes. life coach, family coach. Pretty much an indentured servant trying to make sure that everyone makes it across the finish line. It's been um, an amazing journey, one that I didn't think was going to be because I would run away from it and it would suck me right back in. And it was a calling. So it's, it's been amazing. It's been amazing to see parents from all walks of lives get themselves together and see that they are parents and understand parenting. I love how you say that everybody's just a parent. Just a parent. I don't care how popular you are. Nope. Your kid's just pooping in a diaper like every other kid. A lot of parents ask, how is it like to hang out with Matt Damon? And he puts his pants on just like everyone else. <laughs> he smells like spit up just like everyone else when they have a little one in the house. It's, it's all the same. We're all just parents. You've turned your calling. You've become a business. Yes, I think I've become the true voice for a lot of people who have been in this business for many a years. When you read the beginning, and this book is just the beginning, and that's what it needed to be. It needed to be, I needed to start somewhere in order to let people know that our generation failed, but here's where we came from. Because we were just, we were a dying breed. Yes. You know, because the manners that we were taught, the things that we were we did to survive were um, were important then, but now we've become so instant. They look over having twenty five cent in your penny loafer because you needed to make sure you had money to make a phone call to get home. Yes, you know, in the one car situation. So those great milestones that we had in life were dying, and someone needed to resurrect it, and that person became me because. It was something that I got over and over and I raised her by and, you know, and you raised your daughter by and and it's important and it gets you so much further. And because you want more for your kids. Yes. You know, I'm sorry I sucked as a mom, you know. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. You did not suck as a mother. You did the best that you could as a mother with the tools that you had. And they need to understand that and adjust themselves and get into place. Am I preaching to our choir? Yes, and I'm loving every minute of it. Because we worked all those hours because we had to do what we had to do. And how many jobs? Oh, Oh. at one time? Uh, Thank you. Uh Uh-huh. Left one and went to another Seven days a week. Oh. Mm. You do what you have to do so you can do what you want to do. Mm. I taught her to drive a five-speed because I had to learn how to drive a five-speed because the rules were I was never not to be at the house if I was hanging out with my friends because back then there was one car. All of you piled into one car. It didn't have air conditioning No, it did not. (laughs) It did not. And you picked up your friends accordingly who got the best seats in the car. Yes. Okay, so... (laughs) So with that being said... You wanted your best friend up front, so you picked them up There you go. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, sorry, girls. But anyway, with that being said, 
I had to learn to drive a five speed because if something happened, I needed to make my mom and dad were like, you're going to be home. There's no excuse. So if the car is not starting because the battery's dead, what? Guess what you're going to do? You push it and you let off the there clutch. You go. I learned <laughs> on the stick. There you go. <laughs> so she had to learn on us. She had to learn. Taught me how to do a tax return. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> She's been doing payroll since she was 14, and now she owns a payroll company. There you go. See? Yep. <laughs> so it's, we we do have wisdom, and it's important. And I felt like we needed to start at the beginning and start all over and let people know where it does come from. You know, you have it. You have that power. But we've become so instant and so muffled as parents. Parents used to have a lot of, carried a lot of clout. Yeah. You know, yeah. it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't I don't carry. Think it's that important no, anymore. It doesn't carry as much clout because we've let it dwindle away because now we give them so much. But it is rewarding when they have kids. Yes. Grandkids are the best thing in the whole wide world. Oh, careful. The little cream the little cream. <laughs> now, Katie's got two kids. Two amazing, amazing children. Amazing. This is the ample <laughs> opportunity to ask the worldwide famous Nanny Connie. Okay, hey. yeah. Now, one, I don't have a single question about her because she's an absolute angel. My 11-year-old girl, Maya. Both your kids are angels. Uh, they are. They However, will watch this. Uh, Cooper, my four-year-old boy, Bless pure his heart. wild Bless his energy heart. boy. I don't want him to ever lose his personality. He's and an he extrovert. He talks to everyone. But what? I, maybe I need to do something. Be more patient. I don't know. But what can we do to kind of help? Not rein him in, but just any advice for? I don't want to say dealing with him, but keeping my sanity with a wild boy. Four years old. Four. And is he involved in any sports? He is not. We tried soccer. He told the soccer coach, my legs don't run. <laughs> <laughs> but it's because, honestly, I think it's because they, he was supposed to be running and everybody else is running. And he, you know, most four-year-olds or three-year-olds, they chase the soccer ball in this big group. And he's just standing there doing his own thing. Uh, he was laughing at the other kids running after a ball. He just stood there like, what are you Sounds like he's pretty smart. <laughs> he is. <laughs> Too smart. <laughs> I think he needs to be involved in a sport, okay. some kind of activity that helps him get rid of some of the energy that he has. And it also connects him with other little boys, okay. which will help get rid of some of that little energy that he has. Four years old, that's that time. That's when they start really feeling like, mm, I'm a tough guy, you know, watching <laughs> PJ, Look at my muscle. Yes, PJ Masks and all the other little things that they feel even tougher watching these cartoons and yeah. stuff, which is fine. But we need to be prepared, especially for boys. Girls dive off into the dolls, and they're a little more relaxed. Girls are a little more docile. Boys have a habit going on. Not all girls don't. Okay, so <laughs> most girls are, are, you know, you can kind of direct them a little. They'll they'll suck on to what you're saying and, and kind of go, okay, you know, kind of cool. But boys are, yeah. They're all in. They, they want to climb on top of the counter. They use the mm-hmm. doorknob hinges for swing gates, you know, <laughs> all of these great but, but things. He, he's not manipulative, but he will play me. He'll ask me something just to see how I'm going to answer. Give me some water. He knows he... Do you know my number one saying? Have you, have you heard it yet? This is a game of chess, not checkers. And little man is playing chess with you guys. He is. He is. He's so smart. He's, he says he's going to do a recon mission. <laughs> Give me some water. Okay, let's see what you do. That's it. My funniest story is uh, I have so many, but this is really funny because I never knew that um, John Krasinski, uh, Emily Blunt's husband, was such a Bernie Mac. And I love Bernie yeah, Mac. Yeah, he's hilarious. <laughs> Late, great Bernie Mac. But... Uh, we always go back to uh, his comedy skit where he talks about him downstairs and the, almost the milk and cookies, you know, children. He And that's why I think I related a lot to his comedy. We were in stitches laughing about how parents are looked at uh, or the older person is looked at by the child. So there's this nine-year-old, maybe, the little girl sent the little boy down for some milk and cookies. Oh, she was three. Yeah, she was yeah, and, and her brother sent her down for some milk and cookies. So, so you know, testing the waters, 
the, the little boy was testing. He wasn't going down there because he knew an adult was down there. But the little girl was like, he says, where's my milk and cookies? She goes, him downstairs. Talking about <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, kids kind of test it and see. And they send their little buddies out to see, too, what's going on to make sure that they know how far they can go. Nanny Connie, you have almost 37,000 followers yes. on Instagram. And I love to brag about the fact that they're all just homegrown and genuine people who want to be a part of this village and are interested in getting across the finish line, which we need to do. We need to do more helping parents as opposed to looking at parents like, why is that child crying in the grocery store? Mm. <laughs> or can she control her child in church or whatever? You know, uh, there were people who who helped, who actually lent a hand to families and stuff. And, and I in think your acknowledgement an- for your book, you really, you give the honor to God yes. and thank the village. Yes. And I, I went, man, that's just so real. Yes. So real. And that's where we need to come back to. We have swung the pendulum way to the left and swung it way to the right. But there's an even, there's a middle. And the middle ground has always been the place for people to thrive. People thrive there. Good and evil, they have to meet in the middle. You know, one can't live without the other. We have to understand that we do need each other and we do need help. And we've gone so far to our corners. We did, we, we got to get out of our corners and come back to the middle and have potluck dinners. And um, one of my families here in Pensacola, new baby. And I'd forgotten about this. In the South, when you come home with your baby, everyone comes over with food. You yep. know, but when I started to venture out, the further west I went, no one came over with food. So I really kind of understand it now. And this mom was like, yeah, they kind of didn't bring me in as much food as I thought I was going to get. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's disappearing. Yeah, too. it is. I think the, the southern ways that you yeah. and I grew up with, I think they are Nothing wrong with it. No. There was nothing wrong with it. You were helping out. What yeah. mom, she needs to sleep when she can. Why, mm. why does she need to cook? And daddy, you can get your butt in the kitchen, too. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, it used to be mom did everything, kept the ship in the water. She was the rudder, and she kept it all in the in the water. But now everybody's out working, so everybody needs to learn to. I, I speak a lot to my fathers, and I, re, and I give information for all parents because moms talk about sleep deprivation and getting up in the middle of the night. That used to be mom's job, but now it's everybody's job, you know. So it's really important for all of us to be on the same page. And nothing's wrong with the information. Don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> and don't shoot the message either. Yeah. I mean, it's b- both of them are good, you know, and it's, it's something that will last for eternity. When nothing else works, you're always going to be able to go what? Go back to what was genuine and it works. It's like learning how to drive a car, stick shift, the clutch. Yep. Nothing wrong with it. My grandma. Mm. Man. Amen. Holy Spirit made over, you know. Just good, not a bad yes. bone in her body. She said, you let that baby cry for three days. He'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> three days, they'll get over anything. They'll, they'll be just fine. They'll say, can I help cook? <laughs> I think a lot of what, because just as when she was growing up, she loves to always talk about my, and she will call this, I would say my adjustment of her attitude, she will call it. <laughs> What's your name? What do you call it? What, how you used to beat me? Oh, yeah, corporal punishment. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting on corporal punishment. That was what she used to <laughs> wow. One time she was being really rude to a friend of mine. Uh-huh. I mean, just a little snit, you know? Uh-huh. So I wasn't even thinking about it, yeah. and I just... Thumped her in the head. You would have thought I killed her. Yeah, yeah. She started screaming and crying. I thought the DHR was going to oh, show up. I just oh. thumped her in the head for being a little snip. I remember when the DHR got a lot of power. And I'm glad that it does. But it was really kind of hilarious. I didn't want to laugh. But I was so in the moment of something she had done. And I don't know who gave her the power to think that she was going to rise up against her mother. But she said, I'm going to call. <laughs> I'm going to call 911 or something. I was like, you go ahead and call. <laughs> and by the time they get here and leave and come back, 
we will have dealt with the situation. <laughs> one of her friends came to pick me up from daycare one time because um, she had to work late. A- <laughs> Again. Mm-hmm. And I saw her walk through the door. And she was a nice woman. Like, don't mm-hmm. get me wrong. But I just started crying and screaming. I don't know that You woman. did that to your grandmother, too. <laughs> in there to pick her up. Her grandmother, and she goes, I don't know that lady. I don't know that lady. <laughs> so I would love to hear your advice, because we do have, like, a lot of working moms, working dads. Yes. Um, just, you know, quote, unquote, balance, but advice or insight on dealing with it all, work, family. It's harder now than when we were coming up, because we have put so much pressure on ourselves I mean, the man landing on the moon was amazing, was amazing. I remember being that little girl sitting in front of the black and white television and seeing it happen and going outside going, there's nobody up there. (laughs) But the door that it opened, the Pandora's box that it has opened, we can't put the lid back on. So we need to learn how to manage it and not lose the essence of family. So now we do have to take time to say, put your phones in a basket at a certain time of day, shut it down. And if you have to have a a phone from a burner phone that they get from Walmart or whatever, let that be your landline to say, here's the number if it's an emergency. Mm -hmm. Now you do have communication with the outside world and your children are learning how to shut it down and reset the day, hear the problems of your family, hear your children talk to you. So now you gain the control back from the rest of the world. That's important to maintain the control of the family. And then the other thing that you can do is to make sure we stop going through drive through and have dinner time at least once a week, at least once a week. And if we get once a week, maybe we can do better, you know, down the road. And then let's talk about bullying. Let's talk about all this stuff that the world chooses to talk about. And then that they're going to be the ones to give our children the right information. No, ma'am, you're not going to raise my child and I birthed her. Mm-mm. I'm going to be the one to give it to her. So <laughs> You brought her in, you can take, take her, her out. out. <laughs> you know, so those are the things that we do to find the balance, you know, to make sure that we stay in touch with. And then I say um, date night. That's so important. Even if it's date night for yourself, if you're a single parent, Take that opportunity or take that time to, I don't care. I would just drive across and living here in Mobile, we have water everywhere. I found solace in water. I would drive across the bay and just sit there and go, okay, I know you're testing me, you know, and just sit there for a minute and then come back into the arena with my boxing gloves on and ready to fight another day. If you go under Dog River Bridge yes, mm-hmm. and just park there. <laughs> I've, yeah, yeah, I've done that. When I love what you said on that date night. Take thirty minutes and don't talk about your kids. Don't <laughs> talk. Don't don't bring them in because you're going to talk about them. You are going to talk about them, <laughs> and that's one thing. In every home I've gone into, I've given them and I've impl- implemented date night, and I've told them the first three minutes are dedicated to you guys. Do not talk about these children or this child. And they always laugh and go, well, we made it two and a half. <laughs> you know, oh, well, 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 we made it almost three seconds. We talked all the way from the car to the restaurant. So those are the things that we need to, we've just lost the power of ourselves and we, we, we don't have confidence like we used to. And we're okay with the instantaneous and we shouldn't be okay. You know, we become stagnant in, in our processing of being parents and it takes a lot. One thing that I've gotten from you is to stay authentic. I don't care how many stars Mm-hmm. houses you've you've been in and slept in and been best friends with and they I mean they're all about you. I mean the compliments yes. are everywhere. And but you have stayed authentic yes. and I think that's so important. Yes. You know, you can't fake it and I think what the moms nowadays are doing too is they're trying to live up to a, a definition of what somebody else right. thinks is the perfect mom. Right. You know, I'm sorry I mucked up. Right. You know, I'm sorry I had to work like it. I'm, but I'm glad you got to eat. Yep. I love when you said stop beating yourself up. Yep, you you have to. I did learn something from all of my whippings that I received. There was nothing wrong with them. Yeah, back then, that's how they got your attention. Yes, could have been different. Yes, it could have been. 
Did it change? It did change because she would probably not be as aggressive with her kids as I I was with her. But she was my child and I needed to make sure I was raising her and I didn't have time as being that single parent. So guess what? Her hiney was mine. But I think the fact that parents are not having the confidence in themselves that they should have, you know, and taking the time to talk to their children like they should, I think that's what needs to... There's nothing wrong with it, you know. They did a study one time, and I remember reading about it, where they took high schoolers, and they actually, the ones appreciated the stricter parents because they knew that they loved them. Because if they didn't care what they did, did they really, they didn't care. Mm -hmm. And that time my mama slapped me across the face, I did deserve it. Yeah. And I know it. You know, and I tell a lot of parents, I talk to them a lot about, from the, as my grandmother used to say, you're smelling yourself. That's when you when you are because you're going from from childhood into puberty and you do start with the glands and everything. So you do feel like, ah, I can buck up against this person. But with that being said, from that point until they reach the age of 30, you guys need help. You still need us. You still that's the most you're so vulnerable at that point. I mean, there is trafficking of sex. Part, look at all this stuff that I mean, they're waiting they're waiting on you little young teenagers. Yes. So it's so important for us to still plug in. We can't just say because they can go home and lock the door and get on their phone. and That's as dangerous as That's thing. so dangerous. That's so dangerous. You know, they don't have it like we had it. So I, I just think that we, we do need to think about these teenagers much more than what we're doing and, and be there for them because when they do stumble, we want to pick them up. Yeah. We need to be able to pick them up, not somebody in the street. Or we need them to feel like they can come back to us. So don't push them out. Bring them in. Bring them in. It's okay. Yeah. And we really can be your best friends. <laughs> trust us. <laughs> we trust us. We will. <laughs> I think we do. We've become dependent. I, I have. I don't want to speak yes. to you. I have become dependent. like, speak for her. Absolutely. <laughs> But she does keep me grounded. You know, I am the child in this relationship. I'm the toddler, and I know that because I can be now. Yes. I was the adult when I needed to be. Thank you. But now I did what I had to do so I can do what I want to do. So let me have some fun. And let me do it. That's it. I can do it to the best of my ability, but let me do it. Are you having fun, I, I am having so I am I'm having so much fun at this stage of it that I'm afraid. <gasps> Me too. You know, I'm really afraid because I'm going, I'm like, I have so much that I want to pump out right now. And I'm so proud of of my heritage and how it got me here. I was like, okay, every morning, okay, just give me the rest of the day. I promise, I promise. You know, so you know, I'm so happy. I'm so so happy with what what I have achieved and what I'm leaving for her and for other parents to to grasp. So, yes, I'm happy. And I'd like to ask our girls. Yes. Because they're our girls. They are really. Our, we're <laughs> sitting here with the best of the best because these are our babies. That's right. That's our, Courtney, our baby girls. That's right. Courtney, do you have siblings? I do. Okay. I, my, my father has, I have an older sister, but I'm, I'm, I'm my mom's only child. Me too. So <laughs> I, I grew up as an only child, so that's, mm. that's what I know. Such love. So oh, gosh. our best grow up story is when she, I pick her up from school and she says, well, so and says mother cuts up her apples and puts peanut butter on it and she packs her lunch and bit, 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 bit. I hit this story <laughs> makes me sound like such a brat. You, and I am not the person that I was when I was 10 years old, just for the record. We'll just let that be. Oh, thank All you. Right, so, <laughs> Courtney, how is it managing with your mom? You know, I mean, she's all over the world now. I stay in daily prayer. <laughs> Every day I wake up and I just ask God, just give me patience to make it through a day. It's interesting seeing so that. Seeing that dynamic shift from really her being like the parent and then we switched roles and it's been hard in an aspect because it's her realizing that I'm my own woman. I I can kind of stand on my own two feet and you being confident in that you raised me to be this person. 
And now it's like you see this person, you're like, well, wait a minute, but no. But I've and, created a monster. Yeah, and it's <laughs> kind of like, and she calls me a pit bull. Like she calls me a she. But I raised her to be independent. Right, right, right. And so but it's not um, for me. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. no. I'm, I'm just going therapy session. Therapy session. <laughs> so it's hard. It's hard sometimes for her to <laughs> allow me when I'm in those meetings and my and I'm in those spaces. To be that person. I mean, that's what she sent me to college for. That's what my degrees are in. So allow me to operate in my space because that's what I'm good at. And it's hard for her to look at me and and not see her daughter. You know, you have to separate personal and business. I'm really good at separating personal and business. She, however, is not so much. All over the board. <laughs> I love it. She will. So it's it's been interesting in in seeing that aspect, but it's also I'm very proud of her because I get to sit in spaces like this and meet people from the outside perspective, and they show me her through their lens, and then I realize how special she is in the space that she's in because I'm highly proud of what she's accomplished because she is has no college degree. She worked as a single parent. I was there when she was working umpteen hundred jobs. She used to wake up in the morning and walk to school to be a cafeteria worker. So she had to be there before what, five in the morning? Between five and six, be five thirty and six, we had to have breakfast ready for the kids. Sounds Brooklyn. You're so she, Brooklyn. Went, mm-hmm. so she would walk to work when her car broke. Like she would have to walk to work and then she would walk back. But I would get on the school bus and I would go to school, and it's just those kind of dynamics that made me realize, you know, the hard work that she's put into this, and then also to see her operate in her purpose and in her gift. And realizing that your purpose and your gift will always make room for you. It'll always open doors, even if you don't have the education that people say you're supposed to have behind it. When it's your gift, it's your gift. And there's nothing that you can change about it. Nobody can take it away from you. Everybody has a God-given Absolutely. gift. Absolutely, Every single person. And we have walked away from that, Absolutely. understanding that we have that God-given gift because we become so instant. But when we like nurture it and, and embrace it, when she was saying it's amazing for her to hear how mom through other people's lenses, but that was a part of her life that I gave up like Easter's and special trips and stuff. When I couldn't go with her, I was with this family in Huntsville, Alabama or North Carolina, or I jumped off the interstate because a family in Birmingham was having their fifth and she didn't know what she was going to do. And I'd, I'd tell her, Go to your grandmother's house and have Easter, and I'll be home in time for Easter dinner. But the whole day of Easter egg hunting, I wasn't there. you know. But then she gets to see these kids and see, so you were the person. You were the family. And I'm, it gives justification to all of this. We can both identify to this. Is like the number of times we would put money aside for you girls to go on the trip with the class we weren't that mother to jump on the bus, but we sponsored a trip for you to go and probably somebody to go with you, you know, and we were just so happy that we could get you to that point. You had no earthly idea the stuff we did to get you to that point. But, you know, you were ours, both of you. Y'all belong to us. As we like to say, we bought you in. And we'll take you out. <laughs> yeah. But it's been a, a major sacrifice on her part because it is. I'm, I'll be 37 this year. And she's been doing this. You look all, great. Thank you. She's been doing this for, <laughs> for over 30 years. Luckily, I, I know what the village is. I know because I had my grandmother. Yeah, my I, sister. I grew up with my great aunts. I grew up with my grandfather. I grew up with my great, great uncles. So I have a work ethic that I can't even pay for. It wasn't something that I could go like if I wanted something to eat when I got out of school, going to Dairy Queen or Checkers was a (laughs) that was a special prize because we would go home and it was home cooked dinners when I got home or shucking peas or like real old school. Not in one house. Not in one house. All the houses I went to. Because it was all my grandmother, my great aunts. Like, they were all old school and they cooked everything from scratch. One of hers was, who's picking me up today? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) That would be my thing. Yeah. Yeah. But it was, and I don't think anybody realizes how much work that she does put in because it's 30 years. It's over 200 and something families. And I don't say this to brag on her. I just say this, what the reality is. She did 24-7. She's never taken a vacation. So 24 hours, seven days a week. 
365 days a year, she was living at somebody's house. Mm -hmm. And when it's 24-7, in reality, it's actually 24-7. Very few families were like, oh, yeah, sure, go have some time off. The most time that she really took off was to go to church. But other than that, like, she was literally a 24-7 person. So right. it was a lot of working hours, a lot of a lot of hard work. So I, when I look at her, I take pride in that fact because the knowledge that she's giving isn't something that's just, you know, she worked with one family. Yeah, that's that's an entire case study for 250-something families over 30 years. That's a lot of dynamics, a lot of elements. And so her, her knowledge is, and wisdom is highly valuable on top of the gift of what she has because she speaks to the entire, I've seen her walk into a house and can tell somebody what their dog is thinking. And I'm like, <laughs> how do you know what's going on with the puppy? <laughs> I do want to stop for a minute and thank Michelle Crow of oh, eWorks yeah, she did for this. connecting us she did this. because i tell you what this is the best time and you uh, guys are fabulous i did not know you guys existed i'm so sorry no, okay. no. <laughs> who are we trust me trust me we'll do this again i please, promise please. i enjoyed it yeah, so now i'm heading to do gma good morning, morning america. america you're gonna be three days live three right? days that is three huge days. three days from I, Woohoo, Alabama, Mobile. That's, awesome. That's it. You know, so we're going to get to talk about families and talk about helping to solve problems, sleeping, timber tantrums. Eat more butter. Yeah, butter. Oh, Justin, he loves butter. All of my kids, it's so funny because they all go, oh, no, no, no. But then when they have, this is the fun, it's called skillet toast. And a skillet toast is skillet toast is because you didn't have a toast that it was working. <laughs> oh, you're trying. Oh, <laughs> and it was just butter in the skillet. And then you put the br- and you put the bread in and Yo, just do it around. And by then you're head walking out the door with your child a skillet toast, and you're making it to school on time. <laughs> you know, so a lot of my mothers have had skillet toast. All right, everybody. Here's what you need to do. Here's our cheers for today: is to go get the Nanny Connie Way book. <laughs> it's got a baby's butt with have no fear <laughs> on it, and you should not have any fear because I am here. I am here. I'm here. Thank and you. you. NannyConnie.com for any updates or further information. Whatever we have going on is on her website. Go follow on Instagram, Facebook, anywhere else you can follow. <laughs> Look up Nanny Connie. Mm-hmm. We have we have a thing that everybody comes up with the cheers. So cheers to mother daughter teams. Yes. Cheers. cheers Amen. That. Cheers. Hallelujah. Cheers to sanity. Cheers to hardworking parents. Yes. Aw. Cheers for you two and you two. And Aww. that that was cheers to the guests. Host and to the daughters, to the because, daughters, because mm-hmm. they have truly let us see that our work was not in vain at all, and they put up with us. Thank you <laughs> every day, and it's only going to get better. Can't with wait, butter. <laughs> <laughs> Courtney, you want to cheers? Yeah, cheers to everybody that's around the table that's absolutely walking in their purpose. Like this is a true calling that if you stay with what you love and what is putting your heart, you can absolutely achieve it. Mm. The G in gut stands for God. You just need to listen to it. Mm. All day. <laughs> I love it. Mm-hmm. Love it. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. Thank All you. Right. Thanks, oh, guys. So thank welcome. you so much. Thank you. And thank you, Village. <laughs> Y'all, thank you so much for listening and being here with us today. I'm Karen. I'm Katie. Please be sure to subscribe to Cheers to Business podcast on iTunes or anywhere else that you get your podcast. Visit our Facebook and be sure to give us a like. And if you have any questions or topics you'd like us to discuss, shoot us an email from the website, cheerstobusiness.com.